Okay, today um, I'm going to be talking to you about the library. So, oh, by the way, for, uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, new academy students, I'm Dr. Maloney. Um, I'm not a librarian. <laughs> I, I teach life sciences, but, um, but I worked on this project, um, so, so that's why I'm here to tell you about it. So, um, so we do have a library, uh, but the vast majority of our library resources don't live in that little room. <laughs> They're actually online. And I'm gonna show you how to get to them. If you need to write a paper this semester, uh, do some research, find out about something, um, our little library may not have what you need for all topics. And so um, I'm gonna show you how to get to the resources that we have online. Um, they're pretty easy to use. So first of all, um, you'll, I did this with screenshots because the internet doesn't behave very well in this room. So <laughs> I'm gonna screenshot my way through it. Um, okay, so Academy students, apologies. I have not set this, um, the library stuff up on your website. So if you wanna access the resources, you'll need to go through the college website, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. College students, yes, this is there. Um, a lot of you probably don't know about it, <laughs> but it, it's on our website. So what you would do is you would go to current students and that opens a drop down menu and then you click on library. And that will take you to a page called Library Resources. I'm gonna escape out of this really quick because I preloaded this page so I can scroll down and show you what it looks like. So when you get to this page, um, you see Library Resources. And this page has our three main resources on it. And I know you might not remember all of this, but if you just remember Current Students Library, that'll get you there and then you can explore it. But at least I wanna show you what's there. Some, some of these things might, um, sound helpful to you. So if you scroll down, the first thing that you're going to come to is something called eBook Central, um, which is powered by ProQuest. Um, so this is a huge catalog of library books that are all in eBook format. So they're all online so that you can, um, you can read them. So I'm going to show you um, like a basic search. So if you click on that button, it's gonna take you to this right here. So this is the eBook Central search. So you can literally type in any topic into that search bar and it will turn up hundreds if not thousands of eBooks that you can access. So um, I did a search for organic farming, just for an example. And you can see I got 9,351 book results. Now, not all of these are gonna be perfectly relevant to what you're trying to study. That, so in that case, you, you need to use, um, see on the left, so there are all these um, different search criteria that you can use to narrow down your search. Um, so you, you can decide, oh, okay, let me just go with things published in the last few years. Let me just check, you know, the last five years. Or it, down here, you can, so here you can check years. Here you can check, okay, I only want it to be um, from the perspective of environmental con conservation, or I only want to look at it from a business perspective. So that'll turn up sources that um, are discussing your topic from that perspective. So, um, so you're, you, you've, at first you're gonna get an overwhelming you know, pile of books to sort through, but if you use those search criteria on the left, um, that'll really help you narrow down your search, and, and you'll find a lot of books that, that could be helpful to you. Um, so that's eBook Central, and you, you can try searching for pretty much you know, any topic that, that you need for your classes. You should find a pretty good amount of material there. So that's just books, so that's just a book catalog. So I know a lot of you also um, are gonna be writing um, essays and um, research papers. So I wanna show you another resource that's really, really helpful for that. So, um, okay, actually, let's go back. I wanna show you exactly how to get to it. So if you, so here's the library page again. So if you scroll down, so eBook Central was the first one. The second one is the Credo Reference Database. This is a really helpful resource for starting out if you want to build a paper, and I'll show you why. So, let's see, let's go back to the creative. So if you push that button, this is where you'll end up. You'll end up on the Credo reference search page. And um, 
So I, I really like this resource. I, I wish that this had existed <laughs> in this format when I was in school. So you type your topic in here. So just for my example, um, I typed in, um, oh, what did I type in? Ge oh, genetically modified, because I wanted to see what it would come, out, come up with, like GMO, genetically modified foods, et cetera. Uh, so this is what I got. Um, so it said, oh, okay, we have two topic pages either genetically modified organism or genetically modified foods. And I was like, oh, okay, let me see genetically modified foods. So I click on that, and it gives you a topic page, and that topic page is really helpful. So I actually have that, I have that pulled up so I can show you the full thing um, of what it looks like. So it gives you a lot of things. So first, it gives you a basic introduction which will give you some ideas. So this would be if you're just starting out, you kind of have an idea for a topic, but you're not sure where to go with it. This thing will help you build uh, a research paper out of sources and ideas. So on the right, you see there's a mind map. So these are all the topics that are related to this topic. So that could help you narrow down what you want to write about. Then here are related topic pages, biotechnology, genetic engineering, right? So if you decide you want to go a different direction, you could use one of those, or you could use it to um, combine with what you're already talking about. So if you go down, it starts giving you, okay, here are some articles. Here are some, so these are from dictionaries and encyclopedias. Here are some images you might want to use if you're giving a presentation. Um, and here it collects and puts together possible sources that you might use. So it puts all those things together for you and gives you some ideas. So this is a good place to start um, with the topic if you want to do a research paper. So that's the Credo Reference Database. OK, so what is next? OK, so the third thing on this page is the ProQuest Central Database. Now, this is where you go if you want to find scholarly articles in journals. Um, so this and also other periodicals, um, some newspapers, some magazines are on here. So this is not the place to go for books. So this is for periodicals, mostly academic journals. So if you click on search ProQuest Central, then you're going to get a search page that looks like this, just a basic search. Now, this is the ProQuest Central main database. So if you type in a topic here, you're going to get anything related to that topic from all academic journals in all disciplines. Um, so th this could be, you know, this is a really, really broad search. Um, but it, it's a possible place to start. So this is what happens if you search the ProQuest database. Uh, so I searched for vegan diet and heart health. Um, and so you get a results page. And you can see that I got 14,795 results. That's a lot of results, right? So there's no way that you're going to be able to you know, look at all those results. So, um, so if you just kind of scroll down, you say, oh, OK, it highlights you know, vegan diet and heart health. Um, so then on the left, there are um, all of these um, search criteria that you can narrow down. So those can be helpful to you. So I narrowed down my search to make it more relevant. And I said, OK, I, want, I just want to look in newspapers, scholarly journals, or magazines. You know, no other extra results. And I, o I only want to look at the ones that actually have a full text link. So some of them, oh. So some of them have, oh no. <laughs> OK, I knew this was a possibility. What? OK, so I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I think I might have screenshotted. Yeah, OK, so I screenshot it. OK, so this is the first one, 14,795 results. Then I narrowed it down. So I also, even though you can't see it in my screenshot, um, what you can see is just the result of narrowing down full text. So I don't want anything that's just an abstract, if you know what I'm talking about. Some articles, they just give you an abstract and not the full article. But I want to look at only the full articles. And so that cut down some of the results. And then I said, OK, I only want to look from 2010 to 2019. So that cut down a lot. So I'm, I halved the results. And then only the most, so the search is set on most relevant. So the articles that reference a vegan diet and heart health, 
the most and in the most relevant way will come up at the top of your search. So, so this is ProQuest, so that's, that's what ProQuest will do. It'll help you search um, academic journals mostly, magazines and newspapers somewhat. Um, okay, so, oh, okay. So this is, let me go back and show you. So if you go down to the bottom, so we're still on the library page, library resources. If you go down to the very bottom and you click research and writing resources, it's going to take you here. So sometimes you're writing for a specific class or discipline and you want to start with a really specific resource. You, you already know your topic. You already know, you know what you want to look for. And so um, now this is organized, of course, by college disciplines um, since it's on the college website. And when we put one up on the academy website, we'll put things that are more relevant to things that you guys are looking for and reading about. But for college students, you are welcome to use these as well, academy. Um, so for business majors, um, I've started listing some of the business-related search databases. So ProQuest makes some really specific searches uh, that will only search business academic journals. And so they'll just ignore other things to help you narrow down your search into just those things. Um, for education majors, I've put the education database, which will only search um, academic journals related to education and its um, closely related disciplines, and uh, another database there. Um, now, these are for everybody taking any of the health or science classes. So these are, these are resources for those classes. Um, religion, so we've got a database there. Uh, arts, humanities, and social sciences, so more there. And then um, down at the bottom, there's uh, something called a research companion, um, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, okay, so I just wanted to give you an example. So, um, so Let's say that you're taking um, Mrs. Soler's psychology class and you want to do a specific search for psychology topics. There's a page for that. Um, so this is the psychology database and you can search it just like you search the regular ProQuest database, but it's only going to pull the information from psychology related academic journals. So if you do a search there, so I did a search for depression and diet, and I got a lot of results, but again, you can use these criteria over here to narrow it down. Um, so, there are, uh, so you can search any of these databases like this. So there's also the sociology database. Um, so I did a search on sociology database for older adults who are homeless, and it pulled up a lot of results for that. So, so if you are looking at a specific topic and a specific discipline, these databases can really help you narrow down your search by just pulling from very relevant academic journals. So this could be helpful for you, for you, for specific topics. Um, okay, let's see. Oh wait, so, oh no, I think it closed my window <laughs> for this one. Okay, I'll just tell you about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so the research and writing research companion uh, that's built by ProQuest, so that has a series um, of helpful videos that just give you the basics about writing an essay, um, how to get started, how to write an introduction, um, how to conclude, where to look for resources. So it's kind of like a crash course in essay writing. It's a helpful page. I'm not sure about your video access privileges, though, so <laughs> we might have to talk to Mr. Steve about that. <laughs> um, but it's a really nice page that has about, I think, 12 or so, 12 to 15 videos um, that can be a good refresher on essay writing if you just, if you just need a reminder about how to get started and, and how to refine your essay. Um, okay, so, yeah, so are there any questions? I'll be happy to answer questions to the best of my knowledge if, if you want to know more about any of those or how to search them. Okay, Dr. Carlos. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't think so. I don't think that it's that specific. That's because a footnote and footnote style is specific to the style dictated by your course of study. Um, it's probably left to, <laughs> to you to determine that. Um, yeah, I don't remember seeing that in the videos. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, other other questions? Um, anything? I'll I'll try to field them if you <laughs> if you have questions. No. 
Okay. Oh, okay, Mr. Mr. Jensen. Do any of these pages require a login of any kind, or is that? Oh, okay. That's a good question. Um, so, no. The okay. The simple answer is no. These pages are all. Um, they are. You log in because your IP address. Uh, is from a certain location. So it compares your IP address with an approved um, IP address list, I guess, from our campus that they build um, when we start accessing these, uh, these pages. So um, yeah, so there's no login. Although I will tell you, um, I've been having a little bit of trouble with the Credo, re the reference builder one. Um, it says that we're not locked in, but I've I've contacted technical support, and we're going to try to work that out. You can still access a lot of things from it. It just it narrows down what you can get to. So, yes. Right. Although it seems a little bit fuzzy on the difference between Amity and Campus, uh, because some of the resources I can access from my house, but I also tried it from my house in Texas, my parents' house, did not let me get on. <laughs> so, but it, it does seem a little bit hazy on what uh, on Amity. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, anything within the campus, it immediately recognizes. From my house, it thinks about it for a minute, and it lets me get onto ProQuest, but it does not let me get onto the eBook Central. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, but ProQuest, it will let me get onto it. So, it yeah, it seems like it's not that picky sometimes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, Dylene. So for eBook Central, does it only do like search for the types of books that you're trying to look and not for a specific book if you type in the title of the book? Oh, okay, so if you want to type in the title, there, there are some advanced search options that will let you say, okay, this is the title of, of a book that I want. This isn't just keywords that I'm searching for. So you, you have, yeah, you have to set the search criteria. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you can search by title and by author and um, yeah, all the typical search criteria that you'd expect for a library. Mr. Neal. You can download them. Now, I don't know if they have like a t an expiration date or, but I think, yeah, I believe you can download them. Download the books, actually? I think you can, yeah. There's a download option. Uh, just because the internet was slow, I didn't bother with it <laughs> because I thought it would be annoying. <laughs> but yeah, there is a download option to download the books. Mm -hmm. Are there also like other books? Oh, uh, so it's a pretty general selection. So, um, uh, when you say scholarly, it's including things like there are very general knowledge books, like get started with organic farming, your first organic farm, you know, like there, and then there are more, you know, because that's a search I did. I did some other searches, like, um, so let's say I, I searched for deserts, you know, and, and desert environments, and it gave me everything from children's books about creepy, crawly things in the desert to, you know, <laughs> very, very, you know, college level, you know, things about desert ecology. So, yeah, you're going to get a really broad range, and they're not all going to be <laughs> useful on, you know, a scholarly level. A lot of them might be children's books. Um, some of them may be just really, really general knowledge. Um, so some of them might be somebody's travel memoir. So, <laughs> so right, you have to, like, set the filters so you can see, um, <laughs> so you can narrow it down to just the ones that are relevant to you. <laughs> Okay, Ms. Janita. Oh. Or, oh wait, is there somebody else? Oh, you have a question, oh, okay. Yes. Um, I was wondering about if there's any way that the school will be able to ha help us access Google Scholar too and Google Books, or? Oh, okay, so the Credo Reference Database, I believe it pulls up Google Books references. And Scholar? And Sco I think Sco one of them pulls from from Google Scholar, but the difference is, so on, when, you, when you search on Google Scholar, you don't have any sort of access privileges to most of those articles, right? You'll notice that a lot of them you just get to an abstract and you can't get any further. Yes. The ProQuest database pulls those same articles, but for many of them, you have the paid access to get to the article. So yeah, so all the same things you'd find on Google Scholar will show up in ProQuest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes.
address um, one of the questions about books because I've accessed some of the books from from eBook Central. Okay. Um, you can download them. You need to have Adobe Digital Editions. Oh, okay, good to know. And once you have that downloaded and you have your your login for that, then you can download books from eBook Central, and okay. you can have an access of up to 21 days. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Ebook Central. Oh, that one. I could be wrong. I think it's called Adobe Digital Editions. It'll prompt you to download the ready. program if you try to access a book. Got it. Um, my question is: Is what if you want the actual physical book? Is there a way that we have exchanges with other? With okay, other so for that, you probably will need to get it through interlibrary loan. And I believe the quickest way to do that, Mrs. Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have a relationship with Henderson State their library, is that right? You, I think you've taken students there before. So, okay. Yeah, so the fastest way to do interlibrary loan and get a, a resource would be through Henderson State with that, just whatever relationship we have with them. Okay, anybody else? No? Okay. Well, have a wonderful day.